Hello guys, today I welcome you again in my channel Excel Surgery. Today what we are going to do, we are going to talk about one of the very strongest function of any Excel file that is indirect function. Yes, that is indirect function. Why I am saying it? After watching this video, you will learn this that indirect function is one of the strongest function in any Excel file and I should say that it is a backbone of any Excel dashboard. And if you learn this completely, okay, and you practice by yourself, then you will also agree with my statement, okay. Now let's learn this function. But before I start, I'm requesting you to please subscribe my YouTube channel. Click on blue bell icon to get the notifications and give a thumbs up if you like this video. And please do not forget to share this video with your friends. Let's understand this, what I mean and why indirect function is a backbone. Let's understand that. So on my screen, you can see that I have this database. So if I see this database, okay, and uh, I can easily see that my names are listed here, my employee IDs are listed here, my salary is listed here, incentive reporting manager departments, all these details I have in this sheet. Okay, in January 21, I have the same details, but with different number you can say, but I have copied the same numbers. Okay, so you just imagine that these the numbers are different. Okay, and these are from February. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to play dynamically. I'm going to pull the details from different sheet dynamically, automatically with the help of indirect function. And I'm also going to explain that how you can play dynamically within your data, how you can change rows or column within indirect function, get the values from those dynamic places. Okay, now let's learn this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain this in different manner. First, I'm going to cover same sheet. Okay, so how you can use indirect function in the same sheet. Okay, how you can do the cell referencing and all those stuffs. Then we are going to talk about how you can use indirect function and pull different values dynamically from different sheets. So that will be the second method. Third method we are going to talk about what is the use cases of indirect function in formulas. Then we'll talk about name ranges and after that you will agree with my statement. Now let's learn this. So we have these same sheet, different sheet example. So this row I'm going to use uh, for the same sheet example. On the top, you can see in the I1 cell that I have this employee ID listed and I have created this drop down. Okay, what are these drop down? So basically what I am doing here, I want to select any column. Okay, basically from which column I want to pull the information. Suppose if you want to pull the information from incentive, from reporting manager, from department. So that is why I have listed all the column headers here. Okay, and that is these column headers. So I have listed all these headers in this data validation. Okay. Now, if you look at the right side, so I have these column headers again and I listed the column names. Okay, so these are the column name A, B, C, D, E, F. And if you want to get these column names uh, directly from the formula, so there is another video you can watch that is the cell reference video, cell formula video, which you can watch and you can understand that how directly you can get the column names in this column. Okay, so let's uh, go back to this. Now we have this employee ID, hope you understood this. Then we have these names, these are the employee names. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change these column names on the top and then I'm selecting any employee and I'm trying to get the information for that respective column, okay. So suppose if I'm selecting Debra Crump and I need employee ID. So I'm saying that for Debra Crump, what is the employee ID? So I'm going to get that employee ID with the help of indirect function. So let's understand this, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this information for any column header. So suppose if I am listing any employee, I'm selecting any employee from my drop down and I want to pull the information which I'm requesting on the top. Okay, it could be employee ID, it could be salary, it could be incentive, it could be reporting manager. So for that, we need to do some tweaking. Okay, so on the top, what I need to do, I need to use VLOOKUP. So I should get the information that this column header belongs to B column. Okay, you can see it is B column. So how you can get that? You can just use the VLOOKUP. I just looked up this value in this data and I pulled the column name here. Okay, if you want to learn about VLOOKUP, you can just watch my VLOOKUP video and understand that how VLOOKUP works. Then here I just pulled the cell reference. Okay, 
So what I'm doing, I am trying to find in which row this employee name is listed. Okay, so you can see Debra Crump is listed at third row. So I am using match function here. If you want to learn about match function, I recently published the match function. Today. You can watch that video. Okay, now I'm going to use indirect function. If you want to link this cell, how will you do this? Like you will go to B3 cell and link this. Okay, and you press enter. And it is showing you the employee ID. If somebody asks you that go to uh, like Rie Shima, now it is B4. Okay, what you will do, you will change this to B4. But how you can make it dynamically, how you can automate this. So let's use indirect function. So basically, what it is exactly doing, it is just taking the text as range, okay, and throw the value depending how you define this. Okay. So I am using indirect function. So I need to use this cell reference. Then I need to use this end symbol and then I need to connect this phone number and then I need to press enter. And once I do that, you can see it is A103. Okay. If I go back, okay, let me select the same thing here like manually. It is B4. So let's understand this. It is saying that B column fourth row. Okay. Similarly, I am doing this thing here. So here you are saying J1 and K1. So if you go to this formula checking, evaluate formula, okay, you go back to this. It is saying B and 4 and it is converting B4. Now indirect function will consider this text as range, okay, and throw out the output. So that is A10. Now let's see if I change any column, okay, reporting manager. Can you see Brian Dean? Can you see department? If I'm selecting department, it is showing me the department for this employee. Suppose if I change any employee, Robinson William. So IT department, you can see. Okay. If I select any other name like Jack Ryan, it is hiding behind this. Uh, so it is IT. You can just realign it to right side. So Jack Ryan. If you want to select any other name, uh, you can select and you can see it is playing dynamically. You can select these column names and you can see that it is just playing dynamically and it is looking very good. All right. So that is how you can use indirect function. Now let's understand that how you are going to use indirect function when you want to reference any other spreadsheet, okay, other tabs. We are going to use this indirect function on the different sheet, okay. So in the different sheet, what you see here that I have these drop downs. So what I've did, I just listed my sheet names here like January 21, Feb 21. And you must be seeing these two inverted comma when you see at this that I use only single inverted comma. I'll be going to explain that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select January 21, any value manually. And then we need to understand that how text is representing in the cell. Okay. So I'm just selecting this and pressing enter. Now let's understand that. If you see this sheet name, it is mentioned as January single inverted comma then 21. But if you see this cell reference, I just linked it manually and I didn't use any formula. Okay. So you can see this has put into two single inverted comma this name January 21. And between January and 21, this double inverted comma, okay, it automatically converted that single inverted comma into two inverted comma, or you can say double inverted comma, okay. So if your sheet names contain any special character or inverted comma, you need to look at the cell reference manually. Similarly, how I did it, okay. So why I have used manual format? The reason is because I want to read this first and then I want to create my indirect function accordingly. Okay. So I'm going to type indirect function now reference text. So let's do one thing. Let me change this into text so that we can read it and we can write in the indirect function. So what I did, I just put single inverted comma at the beginning and it converted the formula into the text and there are some other options also which you can use but I'm using this. Okay. So I'm typing indirect function and there is a reference text. Now let's read this. It is saying single inverted comma at the first. So in the double inverted comma, you need to put that and that is how you write any formula and that is how you put any text. Okay. So if, if you are writing any text in the inverted comma. So you write like this, okay, in the inverted comma, you type text or you type B2. 
and you press enter and it is showing you the result so similar way you need to put this single inverted comma also in the inverted comma then you need to use connector that is end symbol then you need to write this january 21 so what you can do you can just link it this with this cell or you can type it manually in the inverted comma okay then you need to use and sign again and then again you need to put single inverted comma in the double inverted comma you can see uh, this one now we have this semicolon again we need to connect this with the semicolon so we need to use and symbol then we need to put inverted comma again this semicolon sign and then inverted comma then we need to use and symbol again because we are connecting again this b3 and how you are getting b3 so that is d2 cell reference okay so you need to make sure that your column headers and your names vertically and horizontal range which we are looking up here in the formulas okay you remember it should be in the same sequence in other sheet also okay so now we are using and symbol okay now i'm going to use this d and again i need to use and then again i need to connect this with two and then i need to press enter and it is showing me the value now let me change this sheet okay it is not changing anything but let me select any other column okay it is showing me this reporting manager so i told you that i'm using the same data on all the sheet but if you i change something okay let's do this in the fab 21 let me see the incentive for rico morai that is 2414.1 that is for february so let me change this okay so here i can see it let me put it 3000 we go back to this and i can see this 3000 you can just change this format to dollar and that is how you can dynamically play with this now we are going to talk about how you can use indirect function in any excel function or formula the reason of using indirect function is to make your ranges dynamic okay you can change your ranges as per the variables within the formula itself so that is where you are going to use excel indirect function now let's understand that so I, what i'm going to do i'm going to use very simple example where i'm going to explain this indirect function to you so what i need to do i need to type some function here and let's do total okay so what i'm going to do i'm just selecting this range i'm just fixing this range okay and if you don't want to fix this as per your requirement you can change that so now if you look at this sum c2 c11 okay so that is what we are going to write in indirect function okay let me put single inverted comma here so that i can see this and i can write my indirect function so let's write indirect function so c dollar okay so what is going to be changed here you can see that c and 2 is going to change c and 11 is also going to change now let's understand that how you are going to write when you are defining any range in the indirect function okay like c2 to c11 you want to do the sum for this range okay and if you want to change this range with the help of indirect function dynamically let's understand that so we know that salary is in c column okay and it is starting from 2 and 11 is also at the last row so if you want to find the last row in any data set so what you can do you can use count a function if you want to learn about this video you can watch my count a function video so what you need to do you need to select this data so you need to select the data starting from a1 because it is going to find the last row starting from first row okay so that is how you are going to do this if your head row is starting from some other row like from fourth row in that case you need to add one two three three rows in the formula okay like this plus three but here we are starting from one so that is okay so a1 to a11 so now i can fix this and i can fix this as well if you want to increase the range because sometimes we do data entry in our data set so you can just increase the range and then press enter it will be showing this 11 and if you add some other row to it it will be changing it to 12 so 12 is the last row and if you are going to add like i explained that if you are adding plus 3 if your headers are starting from any other row in that case why we are doing it because see on the top sometimes we keep a few cells blank okay so you need to type those number of rows manually here plus three like this okay so that is how you are going to type count a function so now we have the c2 to c11 okay so we are going to write this in the indirect function let me write this sum function first then inside that 
either we need to type the range or we can write any cell number like if you type a c okay and 2 and you want to like do this total c2 okay and again you want to do this c2 or d2 something like that then you can select again and just type it it will just total that okay so c2 we know that c2 is number so it should be adding these number let me go back to the cell and here we are, can see it is j1 plus k1 okay uh, so we need to type indirect also because we are only defining the text so once we enter it and it should be working but we need to see why it is not working okay so it could be because we are writing it twice let me remove once let me type this and press enter yeah it is giving me the total amount okay then again if you are using the same range then what you will be doing you will be like putting comma and then again typing this indirect j1 to k1 and then you are again pressing it okay it is giving you the total now let's understand that how you are going to type the range in the indirect function uh, I am, i'm sure that now we understood that how we are typing any cell number inside it okay now let's do this so we have this indirect okay so let me remove this entire function and it should be starting from sum then bracket on then indirect then bracket on and here we are going to type same thing okay so let me remove this bracket to avoid confusion so so what we are going to do we are going to select this c okay so how you can do that so you understand that we have this dollar sign you put dollar in the inverted comma if you want to make your range fixed then put and symbol and then select c you can also make this fixed then you will be connecting this with and symbol and again you will be selecting dollar sign so in, in the inverted comma you can type dollar sign and then you can again type this and symbol and once you do that then you need to type this two also okay so now again add it with the column and then again add it with the end symbol and now again you will be typing the same thing okay so just copy it till here and just paste it here okay so now we have this dollar symbol then we have this c that is c column okay then dollar and now we need to call out 11 okay either you can just type this count a function directly here or you can just link it okay and you press enter once you press enter you can see it is giving me the total i'm going to explain this just let me make this fix i5 i have made it uh, i have made it fixed and i can see this and if you don't want to show these values to your user while creating the dashboard you can just change the color to white and uh, just change and just lock these cells okay so that no one be, will be able to add it these cells and will be able to see this okay so that is how you can play with your data sets and you can create awesome dashboards let me put the, like this and if you want if you don't want to use this count a function and also not these we look up and match function here and you don't want to link it there then you can directly do this okay so let me remove this three uh, let me copy this count a function let me change this i5 to this and let me press enter it is giving me the same result similarly you can change this j1 k1 cell with these formula we look up and match okay so let me make this range also fix k1 so now let me enter this okay now it is giving me the correct result. so hope you understood that how we can use this okay and it, suppose if i change this column header okay like if i change it to incentive it will be giving me this result 23852 so it is the total of this cell uh, this row or it is the total of this column okay so you can see the total here also and it is matching so that is how you can smartly play with these drop downs and these value will automatically change depending on the selection by the user okay it is changing the column basically and if i select any other value because those are not in numbers so it will show me zero okay so let me go back to this salary and it is showing the salary so that is how you can use in, uh, indirect dynamic ranges in any excel function but now i understand because see if you have created some kind of ranges in the indirect function so it is difficult to show these ranges again and again so suppose if you are using count a function okay in count a function if we are giving criteria from a range if you are defining the criteria range in the count for some function and there might be chances we type those criteria range again and again basically to add some more criteria ranges so it is difficult to write these formula again and again what you need to do you need to just copy this formula you need to go back to this formula and here we are going to understand name manager case okay so you need to click on this name manager you need to click new 
and here you can just uh, type the total something like that you can name accordingly as per your requirement and then in the refers to either you can just uh, paste that formula or what you can do you can just click ok and once you click ok you type that formula here now it is uh, like showing the inverted comma so it should not be the case okay so that is the range the total is the range now let me close this okay i'm going to show you something so okay i think we need to paste that formula again the reason is because when we were entering this inverted uh, this formula in the name manager it was automatically convert all the text between the inverted comma so that is why what we need to do we need to come to this window and here we should paste this formula and then again we need to put equal to sign okay now if i close this now it will not show me any error okay if i go back to this name manager now if you see that it is automatically observing the sheet name in the formula if you remember that in my formula the sheet name was not mentioned but when i clicked on the name manager it automatically pulled the sheet name okay that is the case of the name manager the reason is because it is my active sheet and if i am putting my any formula or any cell range something in the name manager that will take that active sheet name automatically the reason is because when you go to any other sheet you will be able to see that range automatically here like you can see this total okay that is coming from the indirect function tip so it is not selecting the range from this sheet okay january 21 so, okay so now let me use equal to some formula then like to put this total and let me press enter now you can see these number okay so this total is coming from this window and if i change this selection this salary okay and make it incentive if i go back i can see the number is changed so that is how you can play with name manager if i put like this sum then put total then if i press enter now it is showing me this so that is how this is gonna work hope you like this video still if you have questions please do comment and do ask and trust me this is one of the function if you have understood it well then definitely it is gonna help you a lot while creating dynamic dashboard if still you think that you have confusion please watch this video again and you can just connect with me and we can talk on this okay so thank you guys for watching this video have a great day please do watch this video on the youtube and do not forget to subscribe my channel and do not forget to share this video with your colleagues thank you